Hey there everybody, um, just cracking into the dome arrow boot eye. Uh, again, not sure what boot eye means, I think it's infantry, but uh, dome arrow is the traditional sort of body armour piece from the samurai armour set of armour. And uh, First of all I'm just going to use a blue grey from the Vallejo range to give a, a base tone and then I'll build up the tone from there much in the same way as the Kaisatsu boot eye. So I'm going to crack on with that and I will show you what it looks like. Um, I'm probably going to do a bit of um, sort of variegated shading on this one as well. So you'll get uh, different tones from different angles. So we'll see how that comes out as well. So I'll catch you in a moment when I've got the first tonal layer done. Here's the initial uh, grey phase as such. Uh, we've got the blue grey on this side which is again from the uh, Vallejo game extra opaque range. I mean, it's the heavy blue grey. And then from the same range, I have just used the heavy warm grey, and I have done the entirety of the other side in the heavy warm grey. So now you've got the sort of warm pinky grey on one side, the sort of bluer grey on the other side, and this is um, starting to introduce a kind of graphic novel style effect where you kind of use a pink light on one side and a blue light on the other in order to create a sense of multiple light sources, but a kind of more interesting um, tonal quality range also allows you to highlight from two opposite directions um, and create uh, the appearance of multiple light sources. So next I'm going to do a, a cold grey tone over the entire thing. Well no, I'll do a cold grey tone over the blue thing and I'll mix some white with the warm grey and I'll sort of lighten up that side. So I'll get that done and I'll see you in a mo. So this is the blue grey side again and I didn't use the cold grey in the end I mixed a roughly 50-50 um, heavy blue grey with a model colour white so it's the same blue grey colour but I just used a flat white and lightened it up and um, given it a dry brush same goes with the um, warm grey so I've just taken the same warm grey paint that I used as the base toned it up and laid that up over the top so this now I'm just going to do the same again, tear them up again, a bit whiter, a bit lighter. And this time I'm going to do a finer kind of dry brushy kind of effect. No, in fact, scratch that. I'm just going to do a straight white dry brush now, um, but I'll do a much finer white dry brush effect. And I'll get back to you in a moment. Here's the blue grey mixed with white side. I decide against cold grey in the end and just whim, what can I say. And then... It's about 50-50 mix, so it's one part white, and that's the model colour white from the Vallejo range, and one part the dense blue grey from the game extra peg range. Well, I'm flipping over again, same on this side, I've, I've used the warm grey, done the same thing, one part white, one part warm grey roughly. Um, just give it another layer up, so now I'm just going to take the white paint and I'm going to dry brush it, a much finer, carefuller dry brush this time, and... That should give me just all my leading edges, highlights, etc. And then I'll start inking in tones. And, well, not inking, um, washing, glazing in tones and um, look into which areas I'm bringing up the white. So I'll catch you in a moment. Here's a first tier of white highlighting. This is the blue grey side. And if I just flip it around, this is the warm grey side. So you can see that there's um, a bit of. If I show them head on like that, you can see there's a sort of a slight pinkness on the left and a slight blueness on the right. And this gives me my basic white tones. Uh, it's, also, it's pretty quick. Um, you know, you can brush through this kind of dry brushing technique. And it's probably the fastest way to paint if you are not using a um, airbrush. Um, airbrush is going to do this faster with really clean fades because the way spray works is you it, it just it naturally fades itself and um, so you can get much cleaner cross fades and blending options but I'm just showing what you can do as a brush painter um, because uh, most of us I don't think can afford wait maybe we can all afford airbrushes but um, they're not necessary and you know, paint's expensive and everything's expensive, and then an airbrush on top, and then all the the compressor and blah and blah and blah. It's a lot of money. It can all add up to. So yeah, this is just similar effects you can achieve. And also, if you do have an airbrush, try it. Try doing um, the different angles 
so you paint different colors from different angles to get the base colors and the shading and the tonal ranges and have fun with this as sort of as an idea of how to cross blend colors in a different way so I'm just going to do a final round of white highlighting and that will be the base color done on the um, Dolmaro Bultai so I'll catch you in a moment there we have it in this grayscale complete no, that's the blue, blue, grey, cold grey kind of side um, that's the longest part as well because I've just taken the time to use white paint and actually like paint in all of the edges like you would um, if you were normally painting a miniature and uh, sort of there's the your face on so you can see the transition between the sort of warm pink half and the, the cold blue half and there's the sort of the warm pink half just facing I quite like this as a it gives you a nice uh, tonal range and I like the way it crosses over as well so the next video will be uh, covering the toning and dropping in colour and it should be that it's self shades I'm going to use thinner tones this time than I did in the past and that will be that so I hope this has been of some use to you and you've enjoyed remember to enjoy your painting have a good everybody and take care. Bye bye.